Le salon des étudiants de VEC, c'est Prestigious Universities from all over the world. Toutes les filières d'études et services totalement gratuits. Le salon des étudiants de VEC, samedi 11 et dimanche 12 février au MCB de Saint-Jean. L'entrée est gratuite. Au VEC is an international awards winner. Bonjour et bienvenue dans une nouvelle émission Santé Plus. Nous commençons avec le thème du cancer pour le mois de février, puisque nous pouvons observer la journée mondiale du cancer le 4 février prochain. Il y a une série d'émissions qui nous peut faire chaque mois avec différentes thématiques que nous pouvons aborder plusieurs sujets et des problèmes de santé qui Mauricien fait face. Là, aujourd'hui, nous avons avec nous le docteur Mansi Kanderia, Lead Oncologist et Medical Director à Eagle Cancer Hospital. Qui fait ce thème-là? Ce thème-là est important pour nous aborder plusieurs volets du cancer. Et euh, tout de suite, nous pouvons continuer, nous pouvons commencer l'interview là avec le docteur en anglais. Hi, docteur. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. We will talk about cancer mainly today. Can you tell us more about the importance of the World Cancer Day and why it's so important to create that awareness? Yes, so uh, 4th of February is usually observed as World Cancer Day. It was uh, started by UICC, it's uh, Union for International Cancer Control, which started this uh, year, you know, activity of World Cancer Day in the year of 2000, 4th of February from 2000. So every three years we have a motto uh, which is followed and uh, it is used to create awareness and to uh, improve cancer outcomes across the world. So uh, this uh, from 2022, 23 and 24, our motto is to close the cancer gap. Close the cancer gap means um, we, we aim to give uh, equal outcomes or equal uh, survival for cancer patients across the world irrespective of you know the geography or their financial position or their educational status the gender irrespective of any barriers the aim is to get good outcomes for cancer care and we use this day as a tool to increase awareness and to have participation from across the world uh, from all people irrespective of whether they have cancer their relatives have cancer or just normal population also because anybody can have cancer in the future so yeah. but talking about gender uh, doctor can you tell us what are the common uh, most common cancers uh, maybe mainly in mauritius between men and women Okay, so in Mauritius, yes, I have seen a different trend compared to other countries. So in Mauritius, in men, the most common cancer is prostate cancer. So uh, this cancer happens mainly, you know, uh, after uh, 50s or 60s. And uh, it is very, very common in Mauritius. It's, it's starkingly more, uh, you know, different from what I see in other countries. Uh, after prostate cancer, lung cancer again is very common because of smoking. We have the colorectal colon cancer, we have stomach cancer. Uh, these are the most common cancers in men. And in women, again, breast cancer, very, very, very common compared to other countries. Uh, breast cancer is common and then other cancers of uh, women, uh, you know, genital tract like cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, the uterine cancer is common. And again, in women also, we are seeing colorectal cancers and uh, with increase of smoking in women, we are also seeing lung cancers in women. 
Can you tell us a bit more about um, cancer with the children? With children, uh, in children, most common cancers are uh, leukemias, which are the blood cancers. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we have uh, bone cancers in children and we have lymphomas in children. Mm -hmm. Some of uh, the kidney cancers are also seen but the good thing about uh, cancers in children is that when, can, uh, you know, when diagnosed at the right time they really go on to do very well because children are more resilient mm -hmm. and uh, they tolerate chemotherapies very well. So the cure rates in cancers are very high in children as compared to elderly. Okay. So many cancers uh, related to uh, Mauritian people, but what about the causes? How far uh, is our lifestyle concerned with the causes? Yeah, so definitely lifestyle is one of the major causes. If you go to see uh, uh, risk factors for any cancers, there are usually modifiable causes and unmodifiable causes. So modifiable causes are something which we can work on and most of the modifiable causes are related to lifestyle. So alcohol is a very common cause of cancer. A lot of cancers, at least uh, cancers of the esophagus, of liver, of stomach, of pancreas, of colon, these are more in uh, women, uh, men who drink uh, alcohol, who consume alcohol and even breast cancer is more in women who consume alcohol. Uh, then comes smoking. So again, that's a lifestyle uh, related, uh, you know, uh, risk factor. So almost 30%, one third of cancers are in one way or the other related to tobacco exposure or smoking. So again, smoking is a cause of cancer. Then uh, physical inactivity, uh, obesity or being overweight also causes a lot of cancers, especially pancreas, colon, even prostate. Uh, diet, not healthy diet also is a major cause. Uh, the more uh, you eat junk food, uh, you know, over fried food or uh, preserved food, preserved meats, uh, uh, salted, extra salted foods and mainly red meat. These are known to cause an increase in uh, colon cancer and even stomach cancer. So these are the main modifiable risk factors which we can actually actively look at cutting down. And besides that, there are non-modifiable risk factors which could be because of exposure to radiation at work or mainly the non-modifiable risk factor is the hereditary cancers, you know. The genes that you get from your parents, uh, you cannot change them. So about 15% of all cancers are uh, genetic. Uh, they can pass from one person in the family mm -hmm. to the next person. I have also seen that Mauritius being a closely knit population, the hereditary breast cancers are very high in Mauritius compared to other bigger countries. Mm -hmm. So that is a non-modifiable risk factor. So yeah, mainly it's lifestyle, but yes, your genes also play a role. Yeah, but talking about uh, prevention, uh, earliest detection, I think, is the key uh, yes. to prevent to better prevention. Can you tell us more about the different methods that are available now in Mauritius? Uh, there's now the PET scan. Can you tell us more about this method? Uh, okay, so PET CT scan is a scan from head to toe, uh, which scans your entire body, right from your brain, your face, head, neck, lungs stomach, uh, liver, all the organs of the abdomen, beat your bones. Uh, so it's like a one, one test which completely scans your body from head to toe, uh, where it also sees that is there any uh, cancer which is not very big in size, but does it have any metabolic activity. So it, it is a very, um, uh, you know, simple test, one shot test, which screens your body for cancer. Of course, it's not uh, a first screening tool that we use. We have screening for many other uh, cancers, you know, which are much more commonly used and commonly available. Like for breast cancer, we recommend mammography for every woman after the age of 45 years, once every year or at least once every two years. We, we recommend colonoscopy once every 10 years uh, for every adult after the age of 45 years. And we, we recommend pap smears uh, for cervical cancer for every woman after the age of 30 years, once every three years, pap smears can be done. But those who have a high risk of cancer or who have had higher exposure to carcinogens or who have a family history of cancer, a uh, PET scan is an additional test which can be easily done and it gives you a lot of peace of mind because once you see that your PET scan is clear, 
you are you know reassured that okay at least for the next two or three years your body is not going to develop cancer and when is it recommended to do the pet ct scan so like i said in high risk cases like especially in smokers uh, chronic smokers or those with uh, high risk of cancer or those who have anxiety about cancer if you do a pet scan uh, it will really screen all your organs and then you don't really need to do many other tests or keep doing blood tests because blood tests can't really identify cancers mm -hmm. except a few blood tests like C uh, serum PSA, prostatic specific antigen which is uh, you know uh, increased in some prostate cancers. Besides that there is no real blood test which will help you in detecting. So instead of doing blood tests you know every month or something in the fear of cancer getting a PET scan done once every few years in patients who have a high uh, tendency in their family to develop cancers is not a bad idea. Okay. But, but one, once a uh, cancer is detected, we rely a lot on treatment. Yes. Can you tell us more about uh, what are the different treatments available here in Mauritius? We are really taking uh, close the cancer gap to our heart and we have tried our best to bring all the modalities of treatment which are necessary for cancer. Uh, in Mauritius at Eagle Cancer Hospital. It is the first private cancer hospital, but it also has the first PET CT scan in Mauritius and the second in the Indian Ocean just after reunion. And um, uh, we also are bringing uh, the first uh, radiotherapy uh, machine, which is, uh, you know, robotically and uh, AI controlled, uh, which has 4D, uh, you know, li LINAC, uh, which is going to uh, be able to provide all the methods of radiotherapy. So uh, when it comes to equipment or infrastructure, we are definitely bringing it to Mauritius to close the cancer gap. And uh, we have all possible modalities of surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, all of it is available under one roof. And uh, also uh, sometimes some patients may have uh, barriers because of finances for that also we have uh, our foundation which is the Eagle Cancer Hospital Foundation which helps in um, paying part of the bills for patients who come from you know uh, economically backward uh, background so that again will help us in closing the gap of cancer care but we intend to get uh, whatever treatment a patient gets abroad most of the patients travel to South Africa, France, Reunion or India for cancer treatments. All of those treatments can be made available here and are made available here in our hospital. And uh, people don't need to really spend on travel or uh, spend on their stay or administrative uh, you know, processes. They can stay at home in their country and get the same care in Mauritius itself. That's the intent of bringing the hospital here. So thank you, doctor. I think our viewers will be more than happy with all the information um, we got today. And we'll meet your team very soon on the 8th of February at uh, Plaisance Mall yes. with the Eagle uh, Cancer Hospital. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you, doctor. Donc voilà, merci beaucoup. Vous nous retrouvez nous dans une émission Santé Plus. Nous retrouvons vous le mois prochain pour un nouveau épisode, un nouveau thème, un thème différent. Euh, la cette fois-là, euh, nous vous invitons à retrouver nous dans euh, Plaisance Mall, mercredi 8 février, que nous prenons une journée dédiée au cancer, dépistage et euh, tout bon conseil gratuit qu'ils êtes capables de gagner avec toute l'équipe de Eagle Cancer Hospital et une bande, les autres professionnels de la santé qui poussent sur place de 9h à 3h. Merci et à bientôt.
Le salon des étudiants de VEC, c'est Prestigious Universities from all over the world. Toutes les filières d'études et services totalement gratuits. Le salon des étudiants de VEC, samedi 11 et dimanche 12 février au MCB de Saint-Jean. L'entrée est gratuite. OVEC is an international awards winner. 